guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. Really excited about today's uh, video because we're going to do something I've always considered impossible, and that is to actually turn down a handle like this by hand. And I'm really fortunate I've got my friend Randy Pattison, Pat Pettus. Pettus. Yes. Here to help us. <laughs> and, we're, and we're north of Atlanta, about two hours in Tacoa. Randy and I met actually through Craigslist, and I bought a milling machine from him. Well, we actually traded a milling machine and a car and this. And let's just say that when Randy and I are negotiating on something, you don't want to be in the room. We are fighting and battling and positioning. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> we have a lot of fun doing that. Well, Randy and I became really good friends, and I come out to his shop where he got about 6,500 square foot of shop space here with tools and tooling that one of these days I'm going to do a video actually pretty soon to show you everything here because a lot of it is time to sell off. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about that on another video. But Randy's going to show us something that is I consider impossible and he's going to prove me wrong today. Mm -hmm. As a demonstration we're going to reproduce this handle off of a Harding's lathe. Yeah. Because of the curved parts it's, it's hard to turn with the using the hand wheels on the lathe but it can be turned by hand very easily. And, you know, back when uh, machining began, everything was turned by hand. And, and of course, it applies to small parts and, and large parts. Well, and you're telling me about an engine you saw in England that the head was actually turned down. Yes, in, at the Kew Bridge Museum in London, they have two huge steam engines there. And uh, you can go up on top and see the top of it. And the cylinder head on a engine with a 90 inch diameter piston in it, <laughs> that casting was machined by hand using what the guys there call a lance. It was a, a pole with a chilled cast iron insert on the end of it and they used it to turn and the, the head and of course the head has all these curly cues and fancy no. curves. And, yep, a big, big cast iron casting all turned by hand. Tell us what you're going to do here and let's start turning some metal. Well, I'm going to rough down the, the part so we will gouge off as much metal as quickly as we can to save time and then we'll go to the hand turning tools to turn all the curved portions of it. And I'm going to turn the cylindrical part that presses into the handle first and then I'll turn the diameters down so I have it kind of as a guide to go by when I start turning by hand. And when we rough down everything we can with the regular tool in the tool holder, then we'll go to the hand turning tools and turn all the curved portions of it. Great. Let's get to work. Yeah. We're, this is C1018 cold roll steel. Uh, you know, just average everyday material. And I'm not after a finish, all I'm after is, get, is getting the material off. This is a Rockwell 10 inch lathe with a variable speed and, and it, for small parts it's the, my favorite machine in the shop because it, it works so good with collets. It's always uh, a good idea to make a drawing of everything. I don't, well, I, I keep a log book of all the, uh, the parts that I made and I try to do it in such a way that the parts would be interchangeable. If I have to, I can make them again. If you call me and say, I need another one of those handles. Okay. Hopefully I can make you one and when you get it, it'll actually fit. <laughs> All right, we're going to change to our 
two bit that allows us to go straight in and uh, try to hog off some of the superfluous material that we've got there that we don't, no sense in turning by hand, something we can uh, turn with a machine. At least that's my way of thinking. My little drawing shows that neck down area at 162 in diameter. So see where we're, yeah, we're going. Yeah, match it up so they can see what you're yeah, We've got our little shoulder there. And now I'm trying to rough down this small diameter here. And once I get a, a diameter, then I can blend the OD of the big piece here to the curve of the small piece uh -huh. just by turning it by hand. It's, it is very difficult to follow, uh, well it may be for, it is for me to follow a curve using the hand wheel. Mm -hmm. Some other people may have better luck at it, but I don't have good luck but trying to make a neat looking part using the hand wheel when it's so easy to do with the by turning it by hand. Man. There it is, kind of rough down. Now we're going to... That fits, uh, that's a pretty close fit the way you've got that carved mm -hmm. out. And then it'll, it makes it a lot easier to, to not... You want to take off the least you can by hand, and, mm -hmm. but you don't want to cut it too close to where you don't have something there to clean up with a hand to. Right. So then you're going to carve out this center part, mm -hmm. and then you're going to work on this end a little bit, yep. and then we're going to cut it off turn it around and then finish, finish that end. Finish the radius on the end. Excellent. So now we're going to switch to the hand tools. Yes. So I'm, I'm excited to see how you do that. Uh, on a big lathe, I just use a piece of key stock held in the tool holder to, like I would a regular two bit, but, but here it's just easier to just turn it around and anything to hold it up. So we're trying to get this level and we're going to actually use this to put the tool on. Yes, that's, I'm going to use that as a tool rest just like you would a wood lay. Okay. And i take my homemade tool, it's just a tool bit. I uh, made a little adapter and drove it into this handle that I got at the pawn shop for 25 cents. <laughs> now what I want you guys to see, see how small this tooling is? So you don't need something large and heavy because originally when you were talking about this I thought you'd have this big chisel in your hands mm -hmm. but you've got this very delicate um, chisel well, it, and then the point on this and you've got even smaller yeah ones. that actually is a big one here's a uh, this is an, a brand new original graver it's a eighth of an inch square and it's used by engravers it's you know a graver okay. you can still buy them new that's the one I made to use on bigger parts Mm -hmm. And just because the handle is larger, it's just easy to Makes use. It easier. Yeah, yes. but these are um, these are store bought. I mean, these are some um, watchmaker in uh, Europe gave me these. These are original watchmakers tools from France. But that's all yeah. you need. They're just eight to an inch. Which is amazing. Now, and what's interesting is it's easier to see the. Um, profile to the edge here because I had originally thought that you would the tooling would look more like it is for a normal metal lathe yeah. but really mm -hmm. you've got a diamond shape here and we're going to actually peel off the top this way. Yeah, yeah. When I was trying to learn I couldn't find anybody to show me and I thought you would use it like you described and the secret was that you turn on top you don't turn down on the side you turn mm -hmm. on top if you try to turn down on the side it'll hang and bend your tool uh, so you have to be careful but if okay. you turn on top and it hangs it just pushes it backwards mm -hmm. so it doesn't damage the tool That's or all the work for that okay. uh, only reason i'm using this one is just because the handle's bigger it's a little more convenient okay it doesn't work any better than the little ones but just to clean up some of that stuff there 
Now, do you ever use oil for this? Uh, no, I don't. I, it might help, but I don't. I'm going to have to sharpen my tool. The same rules of turning apply to this. There's no free lunch, so you don't get anything for nothing. Just because you're turning it by hand, you have to follow the same speeds and speed rules that you would normally use. I also use a round one. This is just a, a round high speed tool bit driven up into that little file handle. But it works good on inside curves. The cutting forces are very low. That's why the tool is so small. You want to try it while we're here? Yeah. You want to feel of it? Because we got extra material right in there. Just try climbing that radius there and see, see how low the, uh, the cutting forces are. You then get up on top. You, there you go. See how little how little force it takes to turn that chip. I I really like the uh, round tool. Mm -hmm. Don't get too far back, and I can fix it. So. <laughs> Clint, you have no faith in leave, my ability. Leave, leave me a little bit of material, and I can always fix it. But would you have believed that it would take that little bit of force to remove that metal? Not at all. It's it's really. And once Surprising. you once you practice and get used to it, you'd be surprised what a chip you can turn with that thing. Okay, go ahead. All right, we uh, we turned the part. Um, we took the stock out and sawed it off in the bandsaw. Changed the collet. We're going to hold it by the cylindrical part there, and finish machining it. Polished it up a little bit with some sandpaper and it should be finished. I am happy. This is one of these projects I've really dreaded having to do, or actually I was gonna look for the part and buy it, but now I don't have to. If you call them and ask what they want for one, I'd be curious to what they had to say. I'm scared to make that phone call. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Hardings brothers probably wanna still make their money even out of their grate. But is that smooth enough? You want to, we can sand on it well, you know, I think we'll sand on it later. I think we should uh, wrap this video up. Okay. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Randy, I got to say, this has been fantastic. You know, I got to say, I'm really fortunate that I got to meet Randy, and I got to have a real, true mentor in the area to teach me about machining. I come up to Randy's shop about once a week, and he's always teaching me something that is fantastic and all I have to do is come in and clean up around here yeah. <laughs> it's kind of an adventure yeah. as long as I'm getting eight hours of work for an hour of teaching I'm in good shape you are <laughs> yeah. Randy I want to say thank you <laughs> thank you Dave. and you guys now go out in your shop and build something cool all right you guys till next time take care <laughs>